Hey guys, I know it's been way too long since I've uploaded a video, but here I am. Um, this was really a perfect opportunity to make a video um, since I was able to get this entire painting recorded. So I decided why not to just go ahead and record it as soon as possible. So yeah, here we are. This one, I, I titled the video, um, How to Get Away from Muddy Colors, because I know that was an issue with a lot of people that I would look at their artwork with the recent giveaway that I had. Um, and it's also something that I struggled with for a long time. Um, actually, the main reason I didn't do a lot of artwork that was in color for my Instagram was because I was afraid of the colors just being terrible. Um, <laughs> yeah, I admit I'm pretty vain about wanting to keep the quality on my account pretty high. And so when the thought came to start doing more colored artworks, I didn't really want to do it because I knew I didn't have what it took to keep it to the same quality level that I wanted. What you're watching right now is a sketch before the color process um, that I did on Instagram. I posted it as a final line art beforehand. Uh, I was really excited with this one because it everything just worked out really well, really quickly. Um, I feel like I got the proportions right and I was able to get the hand in there looking good and everything was just great. Um, it's I'm looking at a reference when I draw this. Um, it's a reference from a musician on Instagram. Uh, her name, her handle is Kate Kane. I'm not sure what her name is, but she liked the photo when I uploaded it, so I was pretty excited. Um, but yeah, I'm just working through the line art right now. I wanted to have a very thin line art for this one. I didn't know I was going to color it at the time, but I just felt like getting a very technical look on this one instead of going for a very um, kind of painterly sketchy look. It wasn't something that I wanted to be super, I wanted it to be clean. Um, I wanted to work on my line work skills and all of that. So here you can see me, um, before I did the color I just wanted to get a little bit of separation from her shirt and then now I come back in to fix it up because I knew I wanted to kind of do a cell shading approach to begin. So I needed to close all the line work and erase the shading that I had done. So here I'm just, I'm still prepping it for color. Just adding a little bit of flyaway hairs and cleaning up the line work because I knew I wanted to make very little changes to it later on. And then you can see the technique I do is basically I color in a zone and then I fill it in um, using the tool in Procreate to fill in colors. And it's really tricky because sometimes there's some white spots left, but it's hard to it's hard to find them. Some of you may notice that the the color I chose for the face initially is like all of Ross draws um, characters, but that quickly changes. And now you see some of the um, color references I used. The color palette on the left is what I wanted the main feel for this piece to be. It ended up changing quite a bit, but uh, I think it was a great starter. And the colors on the right, I didn't really color pick from them, but I wanted to use them as an idea for the kind of shading style and technique I wanted to have. I wanted things to feel like that certain type of materiality going forward. So with the colors, I basically had your ba my base tone and then I would apply these different lights and darks to the areas. Um, I quickly added the highlights in there because that gets things looking good really quickly and that's important for me to feel encouraged to keep moving forward on a piece. Um, but yeah, you can see me adding shadows in there which really made everything start to pop. Um, I'm adding some of the blood and the red um, vibrant tints in there. I wanted all of the facial geometry to be really subtle. Um, one of my favorite artists that I like to look up to is uh, Kushin Avilia and he really doesn't emphasize form too much but he he's able to still get very engaging and interesting paintings done and so I really wanted to do that I didn't want to focus on something that gets too granular with all of the anatomy I was even hesitant to add the the flesh under the eyelids because that tends to age my characters really easily but this time I think it went well with the hair I didn't really know exactly what I was doing but I knew I wanted to follow one of the biggest tips that I have for getting rid of muddy colors, which is not to use black anywhere. 
So when most people think about color, it's really something that's just two parts, the color and then how light and dark it is. So what people will do is they'll grab a color and either they'll take an airbrush that's black and shade in the dark areas, or they'll take the same paintbrush that they use to add the color and they'll just move straight down the color um, grayscale, the color scale um, block, and they'll just add black to it. And if they want to make something lighter, they'll just move up closer to white and then they'll make it lighter like that. And that can very quickly make your paintings look muddy because what you're doing is you're looking at color in only two ways instead of three ways. Color is three main components. So the first way to look at color is hue. And that is looking at it as different colors, basically like red, orange, yellow, blue. All of those are different hues. The second way to understand color is the value. So that's the light and the dark. Practicing grayscale paintings is a great way to understand value but you have to include the third aspect of color, which is intensity and saturation. And so with that, that's basically how vibrant something looks. So comparing a slightly yellow vanilla wall to the yellow of a newborn chick, you know, that's a very vibrant yellow compared to the yellow of, you know, a vanilla wall in a traditional house. That's still that's still kind of yellow, but it's very, very, it's very faint. It's very desaturated. And so when you understand those three, your paintings will look much better. And so let's, if we look at the dark areas of something, what you do is instead of just going and adding black to a shadow, you go down, you get it darker, but you also make it much more saturated because colors in dark areas become very vibrant, even though they're dark. So if you look at my painting, if you look at the, the darker areas, you see they never really get black, but they get to this really intense version of it. So there's a really intense red in the, in the robe, I guess, that she's wearing. I didn't really pay much attention to the clothes. And you'll see there's a very deep, rich brown in her hair. And so that basically, that tip alone should really help a lot of people with their art if they can take some time to understand it. Just don't add just black anywhere. You really want to make things more intense as they get into the shadows. Whether you want to make your shadows cool or hot, it doesn't really matter. But shadows should never just be, oh, just add black to it because your paintings will quickly get that kind of disgusting, muddy feel um, that I can quickly identify in anyone's art. And you can tell that they don't understand that concept yet but it's extremely important and it's extremely easy to start putting into your artwork. So I hope that helps you guys out and I hope I'll make another video very soon. Um, so yeah, see you guys next time.